Hi guys, I'm Dr. Paramjeet and you're watching Doctor Education. Today we're going to discuss about constipation. Many of us suffer constipation now and then and it's very common. Almost everyone, one time or another, suffers from constipation. Let me first clear this that it's not important that you pass your motion or you have bowel movement every single day. Constipation is defined if you have three or less bowel movements within a week, then you have constipation. So let's first see what are the reasons why you might have constipation. The most common and most important reason why someone has constipation is because of slow bowel movements within the intestines. Now, why would your bowels or your feces move slowly in your intestine? The first, <clears throat> first and most common reason is dehydration. If you don't drink enough water, then your stool, your feces are very hard. They are not soft enough to move fast. And that's why they move slow and while they move in your gut, more water is absorbed and they become hard and dry and they stuck. That's why you get constipation. So the most important reason, first reason is dehydration or not drinking enough water. Second reason is not having enough fiber. When you don't eat a lot of fiber in your diet, then what happens? There is not enough bulk in your stools to actually push it through the balls. And that's why the movement becomes slow. Again, slow movement means more time the bowel will have the feces and more time the feces spend in the bowels, the more water it gets absorbed from the feces and it becomes dry and hard. And then slowly over a period of time, it gets impacted on the lower side and causes obstruction. So not getting enough fiber and not drinking enough water is one of the basic reasons. If you want to know about health and have health concerns, then subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon. You'll be notified about all upcoming videos. Third reason is changes in your diet. What happens is, if you actually have a drastic change in your diet, say you have travel to some other country and you have changed your diet to a totally different kind of food what happens it takes time for your body to adapt and this can actually lead to a variation in the fiber and amount of fluids in your diet what happens because of this again bowel movement becomes slow and that's why more water is absorbed and your feces become hard leading to constipation similarly if there is a reason why you have stopped doing physical activity, say if you become pregnant or you have an accident and you have a fracture and because of that your movement, your activity is restricted. So that's why having a decrease in activity also leads to slower bowel movements leading to constipation. Then guys, there are a lot of medicines which have side effects of slowing the bowel movements and leading to constipation which if you are taking any chronic medications or if you have started having constipation after taking medication then you should talk to your doctor about the side effect of those medications and if needed the medication can be changed or stopped. Then one more reason is there that normally usually when we are out socially then we try to hold on to our bowel movements Say if you have an urge to defecate and you are outside in a party, then usually what happens, we try to hold on and try to resist going to the wash. This, if you do a lot often, then this can also lead to constipation. Because remember, the more time the stool spends in your bowel, every single second, water is getting absorbed. So, having an urge to defecate should be relieved as soon as possible. If you actually resist it more often, then you will have constipation. Then guys, in chronic diseases like diabetes and hypothyroidism, these people 
also have slow bowel movement and they can have constipation. So all these reasons are there which lead to slow bowel movements leading to constipation. The second reason why you can have constipation if there is any bowel obstruction or something which is pressing your bowels in the stands in the end or in between that will lead to obstruction in the passage of your feces and you will have constipation. That needs further evaluation. Now, whenever you go to a doctor with a history of constipation, then the doctor had many options to actually evaluate the condition. The most commonly done test is called digital rectal examination. Yes, we actually insert a finger in your ass. So basically what we do is we try to feel if there is any fecal impaction in your anus and if there is then it can be actually evacuated manually also and you can be given an enema. Enema is basically we put a lot of fluids into your anus and what happens it facilitates the exit of the impacted stool. Sometimes the impacted stool has to be broken down manually and if there is no impacted stool found in digital rectal examination then we might have to proceed further and do a colonoscopy. A colonoscopy is done by inserting a small thin flexible pipe into your anus which can be guided above and see all the large intestine and we can actually visually evaluate if there is any physical obstruction or any other pathology in your lower GI tract. Other few tests which can be run are we can do an abdominal x-ray and we can also do a capsule endoscopy in which a small capsule that you can take orally which goes through all your intestines and GI tract and it records the ultrasonic images while going down and then it can actually be studied later. But this facility is not available in every single hospital. But yes, in metro cities, many super speciality hospitals have these facilities. So guys, actually constipation is not such a huge thing. But yes, if there is chronic constipation and you have stomach pain along with nausea and vomiting, then you don't have to wait. You should definitely and urgently go to an ER and contact your doctor. Now let's see how it's treated. The most commonly used medications are laxatives. Laxatives are stool softeners. These stool softeners are also available as over-the-counter medications and ideally these should be taken only by the prescription of a doctor. Now, if you actually take laxative, if you are having stomach pain and vomiting, then you can land in trouble. And that's why if you have these symptoms with, with constipation, then you should not take a laxative on your own. A laxative actually does nothing but prevent the absorption of water or increase the secretion of water inside your bowels so that the feces are smooth and they can easily go out. Now there are two things which you should remember about laxative. Number one, you should not take laxatives more than a week and number two, it takes a couple of days for the laxative to actually take their effect, take their full effect. So, not necessary that you have to increase the dose every time. And if you need urgent relief, then you can go for an enema, and which should be done by a trained medical professional. Enema, as I already explained, is basically filling up your lower GI tract with fluids, liquids and we can actually put laxative in it so that it facilitates the bowel movement and empties your Now, what can you do other than medications when you have constipation? Number one, remember not to skip a meal while constipated. It will not help, rather cause problems. Secondly, avoid all types of processed food especially junk food, these will actually increase your constipation, increase more fibers in your diet, increase all types of fruits, all fruits are actually natural laxatives which help in relieving your bowel movements and all fibers
fiber on fruits are very high in fiber, especially the edible skin. Any fruit which has an edible skin should be eaten with the skin, not without the skin. So do not peel the fruit, take it with the skin. Secondly, you should eat a lot of salads, especially green leafy vegetables and vegetables have a lot of fiber also. Then food grains, whole grains and bananas are already said they have fiber as well as they have natural laxative abilities. Apart from that, drinking plenty of oral fluids is very important. Drinking as much as 2.5 to 3 liters of fluid per day is advisable to relieve chronic constipation. And remember to increase the fiber content in your diet. Now one thing you have to remember about fiber that eating a lot of fibers will also cause some bloating and gas problems. So you should increase the fibers slowly over a period of days and you will see good results. Then water obviously is needed to smoothen the bowel movements and exercise. If you are not exercising, exercising and increasing your physical activity will increase your bowel movements and relieve you of your constipation. Then two more things has to be taken care of. Number one, take your time in the washroom. If you have an urge, do not resist, do not wait. You go to the washroom, take your time, let the bowels take its time. Maybe it's slow, but once the impact feces passes through, your bowels should be regular. And if not, you can follow all these steps. You should take the laxatives only if your doctor has prescribed it and you should ask your doctor if there are any other medications which you are taking which causes constipation. You can also train your self, your bowel movements to come on an exact time on a daily basis. Yes, that's possible and many people already have done it unknowingly like many people pass their stools every day after the breakfast or after having their morning tea that's kind of a routine for them but actually what they have achieved is a body training and have trained their bowel to actually pass motions on a daily basis on the same time so guys all these things matter when you are constipated and understanding the basics help you deal with your problems more efficiently so if you have any questions on constipation do write about it on our channel and do not forget to subscribe and share these videos. Stay tuned for more such videos on health topics. We already have a lot of health topics covered on our channel in Hindi. And now we have started doing in English also. So let us know what else you need. We are there to advise. I am Dr. Paramji and this is Dr. Education.